It's one of the most common comments I get on my generator related videos, especially the ones talking about how to properly connect your generator to the house, whether it's using an interlock kit or some form of a transfer switch. All throughout the comments, I'll have some comments sprinkled in there about how they do it the old school way and they just connect it into their dryer outlet or a welding outlet and they're able to power their house and only an idiot wouldn't know how to do this. So we're gonna touch on that. We're gonna talk about why that is so dangerous, not just to you, but actually others as well. And it's actually a very big danger to your own home. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's go. So the first item I'm gonna show you and give you a demonstration of that a lot of people were using, and it used to be able to just be delivered to your doorstep is this one right here. This is a male to male 120 volt cord. And what people used to do is they would take these cords and they would at least take one end, plug it into one of their generator outlets, and then on the other end, take an extension cord and connect it to where then you have the male end going into the house or an outlet somewhere on the house, and they were back feeding their house that way. If you were to do this, and you were to plug this into your generator and then into your house, this is a huge fire hazard because what could end up happening is the wiring that's in your wall for say a 15 amp circuit is gonna be usually 14 gauge wire. And if you've got a 30 amp generator, uh, you're gonna be putting out way too much electricity or you could be trying to pull too much electricity through your panel through that circuit and it could start a fire. That wiring could heat up and start a fire. Now you've got a house fire. Another really big issue with using male to male cords is, and this has happened numerous times, is what people would do is they would start up their generator, make sure that it's running. They'd have their generator running. They'd take one side of their male cord, plug it into the generator, and then they would take their other side, whether it's connected to an extension cord or however long their cord is, they take the other side to go plug it into an outlet in their wall. And in the process of doing so, this side is hot. It's got power flowing through it. They would accidentally touch those prongs. And at the very least, you're going to get a pretty good shock. And unfortunately, these cords have earned a nickname of suicide cords because depending on the size of your generator, what it's capable of, the power that it's able to supply, it could actually kill you uh, depending on how many amps can run through from your generator through the cord and then into you. Uh, this is a very, very, very dangerous way of doing things. I know I'm going to get comments about this because a lot of people unfortunately do do it this way and they get away with it. A lot of people try to be careful with it, but we all make mistakes. So what I have for you here are a couple of examples of cords that are actually done correctly. Over here is a 50 amp generator cord and over here is a 30 amp. And obviously you can see a difference in size. That's very important. When you go and pick out your generator cord, you need to make sure that you are getting the proper cord and the proper size for the size of generator that you have. Now, oftentimes when you buy a 30 amp cord, it's gonna come made for a 30 amp inlet. So this particular inlet that goes into the generator is not the same as you can see as the 50 amp, so it wouldn't fit, but some people will just buy the cord, make up their own cords, and possibly put on the wrong fittings or the wrong ends for the capability of the cord. So that's important to take note of. All right, so here is what a lot of people will do when it comes to generator cords, because of course everybody wants to get as much out of their generator as they can. So we'll take the 30 amp cord here as an example. And as you can see, the male end, we've got these four prongs on the male end here. And what this does is it gets put into the generator and then it twists into place so it can't just be pulled out. And then on this one, since it is made up correctly, we've got a female end that is designed to go into a power inlet box. Well, what those folks I told you about that do it old school that have been in my comments do is they will go to their home improvement store and they will pick up a dryer cord. A dryer cord, or at least a 220 dryer cord, is gonna look a lot like this. You've got all of your prongs for your 220, you've got your two hots, your neutral, and your ground. They then just plug into the dryer port uh, where you would normally plug your dryer into. And so they'll buy the cord that has this end on it and then a bare end. 
where the wires are just exposed and they can put whatever plug they want on the other end. Here is the other end of my 50 amp cord and this is what it should look like. Again, another female end. But since they're wanting to plug this into their dryer port, what they're gonna have to do is then get the other side that is going to also be male to then go into their generator. Or if it's a 50 amp, it'll look just like this on both sides. But if it's a 30 amp, they'll have this on one side for their dryer plug, and then they'll go pick up off the internet, or you can actually buy these in store as well. They'll pick this 30 amp male plug up and they'll put it on the other end and they'll have a male to male. This is incredibly, this is even more dangerous because you, you're gonna have 220 volts running through this. You have wire that's gonna be capable of handling more amperage than your standard extension cord. So again, if for instance, this is the 30 amp, you plug it into your generator, twist it into place, and then they take their male end to go plug it into the dryer outlet or maybe a welding outlet, this is a lot of exposed metal that a lot of electricity is running through and looking for something to connect to. It's really not that hard to make contact with one of these pieces of metal here. And now you become the path for the electricity. This is where, especially in this case, there is a pretty good chance of electrocution and causing quite a bit of damage uh, to yourself. And it's just not worth doing it this way. So just always make sure that you have a male end that goes to your generator and then you have a female end that plugs into the designed power inlet box for the size of cord and generator that is being run. Now, another really important note that a lot of people do not think about when using a male-to-male -male plug, it's not just a danger to you and your family and your house, it's also a danger to those around you as well. Because I would say at the very least, 99.9% .9 of the time, if somebody is using a male-to-male -male plug, going through their laundry outlet or their welding outlet, they're not gonna have some form of disconnect outside of the main breaker in order to make sure that that power that's back feeding through the panel doesn't then go out to the utility lines. And therefore, it could send power to your neighbor's house, which could also be dangerous. But a big problem with that is the linemen that are trying to restore power to your house and your neighborhood, they're having to touch those wires. So if that electricity is flowing through your panel into those lines and they're trying to work on those wires, you run the risk of electrocuting alignment as well. And that can come with a lot of consequences. So if this is something that you've been thinking about doing, again, it's so important to get it done right. So hiring an electrician is always a great idea. Depending on your jurisdictions, they may allow for you to pull permits and have your work inspected and install it on your own. Whatever your case may be, that's up to you. If you are interested, at least in the information as to how these work, I'll have some videos right over here. This video up here is where I install an interlock kit and be able to power my whole house. And then this one down here is a comparison video between transfer switches and interlock kits. So I hope that you found this to be helpful. If you did, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down in the comment section down below. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See you.